Hi everyone, welcome to Legal Talks by Desi Kanun. I am Suyash and I am excited to have started the show. On today's show, we will discuss another judicial pronouncement by the Honorable Supreme Court of India, namely Sanjay Kumar Rai versus State of Uttar Pradesh and another 2021 SCC Online SC 367. In this case the scope and the mandate of section 239 and section 397 subsection 2 of the code of criminal procedure 1973 was discussed let us move on to the facts of the case the story in this case is not important basically in the instant case the accused had moved an application seeking discharge under section 239 of CRPC contending that he has been falsely implicated however his application was dismissed by the trial court on the ground that the merits of the case can be gone into only at the later stages of the trial aggrieved by this the accused moved the high court under its revisionary jurisdiction of section 397 However the high court also declined to entertain the revision petition and observed that interference in the order framing charges or refusing to discharge is called for in rarest of rare cases only and that to only to correct the patent error of jurisdiction and the present case is not the one thus the accused was constrained to move the honorable supreme court of india as i stated earlier There are two main provisions involved. First is section 239 of CRPC that talks about when an accused shall be discharged. According to this section if after looking into the police report and other preliminary documents the court is satisfied that the charges framed against the accused are groundless then the court has the power to discharge the accused. And what is section 397? Section 397 provides powers of revision to the high court. The high court can look into the correctness, legality or propriety of any finding, sentence or order, record or passed by any inferior court. But what is important for us is section 397 subsection 2. It states that the powers of revision conferred by subsection 1 shall not be exercised in relation to any interlocutory order passed in any appeal, enquiry, trial or other proceeding. Basically, the powers of revision cannot be exercised in relation to any interlocutory order. And what is an interlocutory order? it has not been defined anywhere in the crpc and a general meaning of interlocutory order is that any order that is interim in nature or that is only for the time being so in relation to such orders powers of revision cannot be exercised under section 397 now in order to understand whether the order passed by the high court was correct or not in the present case the honorable supreme court were used two important precedents the first was asian resurfacing of road agency private limited versus central bureau of investigation 2018 16 scc 299 this case was also relied upon by the high court to dismiss the revision petition of the accused the high court relied upon the following excerpt i quote thus we declare the law to be that order framing charge is not purely an interlocutory order nor a final order jurisdiction of the high court is not barred irrespective of the label of a petition be it under section 397 or 482 crpc or article 227 of the constitution however the said jurisdiction is to be exercised consistent with the legislative policy to ensure expeditious disposal of a trial without the same being in any manner hampered thus considered the challenge to an order of charge should be entertained in a rarest of rare case only to correct a patent error of jurisdiction and not to reappreciate the matter the citing this the high court had dismissed the revision petition now the honorable supreme court of india reconciled the interpretation provided in this asian resurfacing case and the earlier landmark case of madhu limay versus state of maharashtra 
Now Madhu Limai is a landmark case on section 397 and interlocutory orders and in this case the Honorable Supreme Court observed that the orders framing charges or refusing discharge are neither interlocutory nor final in nature and are therefore not affected by the bar of section 3972 of CRPC. Basically this was the ratio of Madhu Limai case as well and the Honorable Supreme Court of India reiterated this principle in the present case. It was further observed by the court that the High Court has inherent powers under section 482 of CRPC to prevent abuse of process or to secure ends of justice. According to the court, though such discretion is to be exercised carefully, yet it does not mean that a hyper-technical approach is to be adopted. So what was finally held by the court? The court concluded by stating that, I quote, it is well settled that the trial court while considering the discharge application is not to act as a mere post office. The court has to sift through the evidence in order to find out whether there are sufficient grounds to try the suspect. The court has to consider the broad probabilities, total effect of evidence and documents produced and the basic infirmities appearing in the case and so on. Likewise, the court has sufficient discretion to order further investigation in appropriate cases if need be. Therefore, it was held by the court in this case that the High Court had committed jurisdictional error by not entertaining the revision petition of the accused and it overlooked the fact that discharge is a valuable right provided to the accused under the Code of Criminal Procedure. Hence, the case was remanded back to the High Court for its reconsideration in accordance with law. Now what are my concluding remarks? I would say that since my college days I had been reading and hearing about the Madhu Limai case from my professors and friends. Even when I joined litigation this case continued to influence the revision petitions in which I was involved. Madhu Limai is a 1977 judgment and more than four decades have passed since then. Yet, the same question relating to the distinction between interlocutory order and final order in relation to section 397 of CRPC keeps coming up and time and again the Honorable Supreme Court of India has to reiterate that Madhu Limai is still a good law. I think that there is a tendency to adopt hyper-technical approach by many judges and advocates, particularly in the trial courts and the high courts. No doubt that section 397 talks about revisionary powers of the high court and no doubt that section 397 subsection 2 seeks to bar its applicability against interlocutory orders. But the fact of the matter is that there are other provisions as well in the Code of Criminal Procedure 1973. One cannot simply overlook section 482 of CRPC that provides for the inherent powers of the High Court to prevent abuse of process or do justice or the other provisions of the CRPC. It is a cardinal principle of interpretation that the provisions of any statute have to be construed harmoniously and cannot be looked at into in complete isolation of the other provisions. A level of exactitude is definitely desirable in the legal process but not at the cost of absurdity. Without lowering the majesty of the Honorable High Courts, I think that it is high time that the ratio of Madhu Limay case is applied in its proper perspective in revision petitions and such disastrous situations where simply to decide the question of jurisdiction a matter has traversed to the Supreme Court does not arise. And it is needless to state that the accused has a right to seek discharge under the provisions of CRPC. This right to seek discharge cannot be completely annihilated. The closing remarks of the Honorable Supreme Court of India in this case are quite pertinent wherein it said that the High Court committed an error by overlooking the fact that discharge is a valuable right provided to the accused. I sincerely hope that this is the last judgment wherein the Honorable Supreme Court of India had to reiterate that Madhu Limai still holds the field and is a good law. 
सो आई होप यू इंजॉयड लिसनिंग टू दी शो प्लीज डू नॉट फॉरगेट टू लाइक एंड सब्सक्राइब अस सी यू नेक्स्ट टाइम टिल देन स्टेट यूंड